Maybe I'll, I'll ask you, Kira, that in terms of uh, the media's role in all of this. Yeah, I, I think the media has a role in all of this, and I think at times, truthfully, I think the media has failed in its role in all of this. Um, one of the issues, as I would see it, is, is that social media, and I don't really like the term mainstream media, I consider us, the, the jobs we do, the media, but the media and social media are having different conversations, and there's a truth in that, and because we are having different conversations, those people who are online believe that the media is censored and they believe that the media, because of editorial choices, is holding something back and is misleading them. And what I think the media has done, which I do think is a failure of media, is to allow certain conversations to only take place with the crackpots online. So, so, so people have mentioned things like, like, like immigration. Go on, news talk. I mean, News Talk had a woman on as a serious commentator on sex education who believes that there are symbols in the chairs in Crumlin Hospital that are paedophile okay. symbols. I News Talk know. had this I woman don't know. on. I, like, don't, I, don't, I didn't interview this person and I don't know who that person you, you is. Interviewed, you had Herman Kelly on, the leader of the Irish Freedom Party, who promotes the Great Replacement Theory, who said that Irish kids we, are going, we to, be chilled, going to be killed, going to be killed and replaced oh. by migrants. Okay. I'll tell the you, I'll, are on news I'll talk. finish <laughs> my, my point, Paul, if you might. And my point is this, is that there is a difference between the conversations that are having in, on, in, in the media and in social media. And in that vacuum where, where we're only allowing people who, and there is a far right, by the way, they do exist, but as Mick says, everyone who's been thrown in with them aren't really them. But while we allow the conversations on things like immigration, on things like gender ide ideology and all of those things to only take place online and the media is running scared of them, the actual media, we're allowing those conversations to be dominated by misinformation and crackpots. And, and I think, for example, if I might say about RTE, RTE is vulnerable here, Katie. Today, I interviewed this morning not a crackpot, Paul, Professor Donal O'Shea, because he spoke yesterday in the Sunday Independent about his concerns around um, the gender service here in this country, and he said that he's being silenced, he's being sanctioned, and all of this kind of stuff. Okay. He wasn't on RTE. If anyone was speaking about a different aspect of the health service, they absolutely would have been on RTE all day. And did you but have a trans person on? to speak about their I experience. I was having an expert on about health care. And when's the last time you had a trans person on to speak about their experience We've had as a trans person? on loads of times, Paul. The, the point I'm making is, is while organisations in the mainstream media like RTE run scared of issues, and not just RTE, by the way, okay. run scared of issues, it all happens online in a space that is misinformation-led and is dangerous, and we need to, as media people be more professional okay, and so, talk and, about I, stuff. And I, I hate now saying I have to move on. That's fair. Because <laughs> I feel like I'm judging you down. But no, no, fair. That's absolutely a debate that we'll have and we'll have to have in the studio. There is no doubt about that. Uh, Pat, uh, yes, Pat. Uh, the, um, in terms of the Garthi in the middle of this and this po polarisation and the, the division in society, do you think that the trust is is breaking down between the guards and, and the communities. Well, I think what's happening here tonight, uh, KAT, is really, really positive for policing, and I'll tell you why. When you consider you the variety... very, very quickly. OK, when you consider the variety of views and interpretations about what has happened, what is happening, and what's likely to happen, and, and the, the foundation uh, for it all, but we let the guards look after it, is not an option now. This is a question for society. Key stakeholders are on the table giving the guards their interpretation of what's happening and saying, OK, this is what we would like you to do. This is how we would like policing to progress from here. If we leave it to the guards on their own, that's going to be a big mistake. The guards are trying to walk this tightrope at the moment, and I think they've gotten it right for the most part uh, of it. And policing protest is not pretty. Okay. And when it gets violent, it's less pretty. Well, I think we, all, we can all see that very quickly, Mick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, polarisation is a huge part of that. In fairness to Paul, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that the far left is like the far right, is, is exactly the same as the far right. There are similarities in the way they go about their business, the likes of conspiracy theories, polarisation, misinformation, all of that sort of thing goes on. I mean, Paul, the greatest respect, your party produced a document earlier this year where you suggested that should a non Fianna Fáil Fianna Gael government take power, the Gardaí would be used by elements to remove them from power. You also suggested that wealthy people, and I don't know how you define that, would resort to far-right tactics mm -hmm. to get rid of any such government. That's conspiracy okay, theory. Okay, I only have a minute left, so I want Paul to respond. Okay, please. well, actually, the main thing I, I want to do is to say that I think you're right, that people can't rely on the guards to deal with this problem. You know, in the kind of society we want to have, the guards would be dealing with this problem, but they're not going to, right? So, actually, ordinary people themselves who are horrified at what they're seeing developing and should expect this to get worse, need to get organised, need to get active. Like, force a trade union. 
is really to be commended for organising an important protest in Cork to defend the librarians. The Gardaí would not defend the librarians, but the union came out, organised a big protest and did so. And I think we have to do what we did again on February 18th of this year. We put 30,000 people on the streets to say Ireland for all, to say we've enough wealth in this country to address all but of the real want issues. Ireland for all, to have, you didn't to want the government. We did not want the government. Exactly. Because why? Why? You, can I tell you why? Well, hold on. Can, can if you, you don't want the unity of purpose to take on the far right, but, if you don't want the unity of no, purpose, I'll, I'll then you, you only want to do it in your terms. I tell you what, you cannot build an alliance against the far right that involves the government. Why? Because the government creates the social problems that the far right feed off and the government creates the discrimination, for example, against non-Ukrainian refugees that legitimises their narrative. The government has created a situation where Ukrainian asylum seekers are treated with some semblance of dignity, and if you come from outside Ukraine, you're put on the street with a 20 euro voucher. That legitimises the logic of the far right. The idea that we can have people from the government supporting that policy, out protesting against racism, this that would be a joke. Is That's polarised, what you're saying. The government the have truth. a... Whether you like them or you don't like them, Paul, they have a democrat democratic mandate from the people. They, they were elected to govern. And you don't have to like them. I don't have to... It doesn't I'm, make any odds. But for you to say, no, we, anyone but the government... That's why I, we're polarising. No, no, if I'm organising a protest to organise against racism, I, I can argue within that protest movement that I think it would be counterproductive to have the people who are responsible for the problems... Counterproductive for who? For you? No, for the organisation of an anti-racist oh. movement. Okay. Because the point is there are real issues. Housing, cost of living, etc. The question is, the left says it's those at the top who are responsible, the developers, the corporate landlords, the big business profiteers. The far right says, blame people below you. That's the big, big difference. Okay. There are we real will, problems. It's a question of who's to blame. To